gaiters though with majestic rider so ever noticed some of our gated horses don't have great top lines There's different reasons they don't have good top line. Some of it's the way they move, because the PC ones don't use their back correctly, and they're just swinging their legs, versus some of the other ones, the ones more on the trotty side, at least the trot when they're loose, will actually use those muscles in their back. So that's one of the reasons they might not have as good top lines, but some of them have not had great nutrition, and a lot of them, a lot of them have not had very good training, so they have not used their backs correctly, and they're ridden with their heads up and their backs inverted a lot of the time to get that racking gait, because uh, a lot of people just go past the flat walk and the running walk and they just want to rack all the time. And so they invert that horse's back the whole time, bring their head and neck up. And again, for long term, that's not great. You can teach them to rack, but then get them to do it a little bit more rounded or neutral back will be better for your horse. If you don't, they can get arthritis in that neck from the, the spinous process on the back of the vertebrae, can impinge on each other up in the neck area. Just crack it up. Um, but it can also happen in the lower back area here as well, because that's where they get the kissing lesions. So that's where they can have um, some compression on the vertebrae as well. And they can slip just, just like we can as well. He's like, I think I'm done with this. So. Just remember, we're trying to make our horses as good as we can, but a lot of our horses compared to the other English or Western horses have not had the uh, correct training. They have not used, learned to use their backs well, and they also have not had a lot of good nutrition. And they need uh, protein and those amino acids to help build up that top line. But there is hope, hopefully, this video will help some of you get better top lines on your horses. The top line of the horse, is from their wither here to about back here okay and that's right where our saddle sits so of course actually has a very nice top line so his wither it just slopes down and then it's pretty flat isn't it, it has a little bit of a slope but not bad okay some horses dip way down and some of it is because they have not been worked they don't have enough muscle but the other factor you want to look at is the, the nutritional factor in it because you can try to strengthen the horse but if you don't give them the nutrients and the protein to actually make muscle then that top line usually will not come up and if you just fatten them up then sometimes you just end up with a fat horse with still a bad top line that scoops down when you're trying to build up top line there's certain exercises you want to do but there's also feeding things you want to do. You want to make sure that horse is getting enough protein. You need specific amino acids to actually help them to bring that top line up. And then by feeding those and then doing the strengthening exercises, you should help that horse to get a better top line and therefore he'll be able to uh, be in better health, but also to carry you better and also hopefully prevent pain over time and any back issues. Okay, so I want to show you another horse's top line. This horse is older. He's 15. He was out in pasture for a while and not work. So he lost a lot of his top line and lost the muscle. So again, the top line is from here back to here. So it's this area right here. So it's come up a fair amount. He's filled in the weight. We're giving him good nutrition and I just put him on some amino acids. So we'll see if that helps as well. And I want to show you the exercises to do. So the first one I'm going to do, you can use your uh, fingers, but sometimes a hoof pick works better. And I'm going to tickle under their belly to get them to raise their back up. When I do it, because I just started it with this horse, I'm just going to do it five times and that's it and I'm not going to ask them to hold it or anything because in the beginning you're asking them to use muscles they haven't used in a long time. And again, the top line is from here back so watch this area and see if you can see it raise up. So it went up a little bit there and then I'm going to come back down. So I'm just going under his belly and you kind of have to, you go on the midline and then see if you can find a spot that'll you'll see his back will raise up so if i just do it with my fingers 
he's not as sensitive. But if I tickle him with the hook pick, there he goes. So what you're seeing is the back raise up and then you'll see it slowly coming back down. So I did it twice, so I'm gonna do it again. So I'm just kind of scratching under his belly. There he goes. So you, again, you'll see this coming up. Good job. And you'll see his head actually lowering down. So again, we're trying to strengthen the muscles here, so we gotta get them, the horse to contract them. So I'm gonna do it again. Good job. And then once he does it, then I'm letting loose. Now, if you watch his back end, you'll see he's moving his feet around because I'm tickling him and he's like, I want that fly off of me. So he's raising his back up and then he's moving his feet around because he thinks it's a bug. Good boy. So as you do it, just watch out that they don't kick you if your horse tends to do that as well. Okay. So the next one I'm gonna do is get him to contract the muscles back here and also raise his back up. So you gotta make sure your horse is good because you don't wanna stand behind them if they're not. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dig in from here down. I like to do it with a hoof pick because it makes them a little bit more sensitive. So watch this area. See him raise it up right there? Good boy. And then I'm gonna let him settle it down. So again, I'm gonna do just five sets. So that was one. There's two. Good job. The horses never know what the heck we're doing back here, right? So you can see if you start up where he's contracting. So there he went the wrong way. There he goes. So I don't have to go up as far next time. Good job. So I'm going to start here instead. So you're trying to watch your horse. There you go. Good boy. Now I lost count because I was talking. So let's just try one more. Now there, he didn't do it so much, so. So I'm gonna dig a little bit harder. Good job, okay. So those are two exercises you can do. I also like to do exercises to strengthen their stifle. So I like to do the tail pull. So what I'm gonna do is pull him sideways. And again, the more flexible they are, the more you can sometimes pull them off the feet. So I'm trying to get him to contract the muscles here and here. So when he does the right thing, then I let go. So that's two. He's doing the right thing. So I'm going to release. And three. So I'm trying to get him to use his muscles to pull back. And this will help his hind quarter. And then this part of his top line here, you'll see he's not contracting so much here when I do it. So you watch and see which muscles are they using. He's using here and here and the muscles in here. Good job, and he's stabilizing me pretty well. Good job, so now I'm gonna go around and do the other side. Good job, hi Chipper. He's like, you're crazy lady. Okay, so same thing, I'm gonna pull. Two, good job. So I'm gonna pull again. Good job. Hi. He's like, you're such a weirdo. So I like to wrap their tail around my hand because it helps. Four. And then I use my whole weight. I'm just leaning back and I'm pulling. And just for a couple of seconds and then I release. Good boy. Okay. Next thing you can do is a carrot stretch. You're trying to get them also to stretch their neck out and their back. So you can see he's almost doing it now as you just have them follow carrot. This will also help you if the horse can't do it at all. He might be very tight in the neck, but he might also have arthritis. And then we're gonna do it on the other side and see if they can come back as far. So he's pretty flexible, but if they can't come back as far, you know they have arthritis and you can work on it, but you're also trying not to hurt them. So when you're riding them, you know, you don't wanna yank real hard or do a one rate stop. Because if you do that with a horse with arthritis, sometimes it'll, It'll give them severe pain and make them bolt. So it helps to see how flexible your horse is. So again, with the carrot stretch, you can do that, or I do lateral flexion on the horse, so that'll stretch his neck. You got a couple exercises for his back here, and then for his stifle in his back, and then I'll show you some in the arena that I do as well. But the other things I also like to do is walk hills, and then flat walk, flat walk up hills. 
because that's going to build their strength. But you want to engage them, bring their head down, get them to stretch and kind of round that back out when you're trying to get this top line raised up. If you're inverting them and going uphill, you're actually making it worse. So you want to bring that head down and just go slow and that way they won't go out of gate. I do a lot of hill work and then in the arena, I do a lot of uh, going forward, stopping, backing up. Backing up will actually build this up. You can back up inclines. That's a good exercise to do. And again... So this is a slight incline, uh, so it should be perfect. And again, you don't want to do them all in the first day. So you do some and then you add more in and then you're going to add more reps over time. So, you know, like I did five of each of those exercises. You know, over time, I'll try to ask them to hold it longer. And then I'll, in a couple weeks or so, I'll work it up to 10 times. And then you can get up to 20 times, but you slowly build it week after week, adding a couple more reps on. Um, so I might do that one day, and then when I'm in the arena, I'm going to work them over poles. I'm going to stop and back up, go forward, stop, back up, go forward. That'll get them to engage themselves, get them to use this area as well. You know, they're, by going over poles, you make them use their abdominal muscles and their back muscles because they have to actually lift up their legs. So it'll make your horse more sure-footed, but do it slowly because if your horse is on the trotty side, it can make them more trotty. So just walk over the poles. Um, you know, put them in different areas. It'll make your horse think, but it'll also make their top line better. But remember to make this better, you have to feed them the correct nutrition and you also have to do the correct exercises. So it's a combination of the two that works the best. Okay, so I want you to see me doing on another horse. So again, there's a couple ways you can do the first exercise. You can just use your fingers and kind of tickle underneath it. Or again, you can use a hoof pick, which is what I liked, and just tickle their belly with it, okay? So I'm going to go on to the other side. I'm going to bring my fingers around here and try it once with my fingers, but then I'm probably going to go more with the hook pick. Some of these horses are a little dull, so it takes them a little more to get it. So again, watch his back here. You'll see this is his top line. His bone does stick up a little bit. He's, um, I think he's 15. So you'll see it sticks up a little bit more. And so we want to bring this area here higher by working out those muscles and nutrients. So first I'm just going to try it with my fingers. So there he goes a little bit, but it's much easier I think with the hook pick. So I'm going to try it again. There he goes. That was pretty good. Good boy. He so notice how his head goes down. So when you talk about rounding a horse, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get them to lift their back up and lower their head down. So let's try it again. There we go, it's going up. And remember, this is hard to do if they haven't used these muscles before. Okay, so I'm gonna try it again. That's better. So each horse, you know, we'll have a little bit different spot. So you have to f find it. So again, if it's not working with your fingers, try something with a little bit more point. And I'm just rubbing it back and forth. I'm not jabbing them or anything. And you just find maybe the points up a little further. Nope. So go back a little further, a little bit. And now try a little bit more. There we go. Okay, good job. Let's just do one more. So his is on his belly, but about here that I get him to raise his back up.
a big difference when you find the right spot to boy. Again, I'm going to do it from behind. And what I'm doing, you can use your thumbs, your nails, or a hoof pick, and then I'm tracing about here and coming down. He's not standing very square. That's pretty good. So here's his tail, that's the midline. So it's going to be on the sides that we're doing it. So see him bring his butt up. Good job, buddy. And then we'll do it again. There we go. Good boy. This is our third one. Good boy. So we tried to get him to hold it. Good job. He's like, what the heck's going on? And again, there we go. Now he's not firing this one as well, is he? So let's try and get the weight on the right foot. Remember, they'll try to make it easier on them and you're trying to increase their strength. So you want to make sure they move. You are using both sides. And I'll go this way just in case you can't see. Hopefully you can see that. So, but he's not lifting up this right side as much. He's actually dropping it down. I'm going to try and get his weight on because his right leg is weaker. Okay. Do the tail pull on him. So I'm going to pull in this direction. his weaker side. We already know that. One. I'm going to pull them way over. Two. Three. So I can, even with me just doing this, I can feel that his, when I went the other way, it was stronger. Four. Five. So, I'm going to do it a couple more times because this is his weaker side. So the same thing when I ride them, I work them more on their bad side to try to make them stronger. And I can feel his stifle shift when I actually do this. So let me feel the other side for a second. Yep, so can't feel a stifle on that side at all, but this one is still, he had that surgery, but that's better. But otherwise I could feel it's still shifting. Good job. Okay. So now we're going to have him walk and then gate over some poles to also help build up his top line. It also helps the pacey horses because pacey horses usually don't have as good a top line because they're usually swinging their legs and not using their back correctly. So this also helps the pacey horses bring up their top line, but also helps them with gait and helps them to realize how they're supposed to use their feet and step over things because a lot of these horses drag their feet. So it does a lot of things for you. So this is just his trail walk or regular walk and I'm going to speed him up to his flat walk. I put him in the sur single because it helps him to know to lower his head, but I keep it with light pressure. Uh, you can do it in a snaffle, which is better than doing it in the shank, but this is all I had right now. Um, those Pessoa's lunging systems help engage their hindquarters, so you could use those as well. And so what I usually do is five minutes each side, but I work up to that. And then I also, if they have a running walk, I work their running walk over it as well. Okay, so now we're going to do some neck stretches with him as well. Right, so let's 
see how far he can bring his neck back. Oh boy. And then we want to see, can he do the same on both sides? So he brought it to about here. about the same because he brought it about here. Again, he's not a young horse, he's an older horse. So we're trying to stretch it, but not make him do anything he doesn't want to do. So we're trying to keep his neck flexible as they get older. Wow. He's super flexible. So neck stretches, back lifts, getting their hindquarter to contract to build this up, the tail pulls the backing up the hills, the walking over poles, walking up hills, but again, engaging the horse's uh, neck to bring it down and round his body out. All of that will help bring up their top line. The nutrition, don't forget to give them the amino acids and make sure that they have a diet with a, enough fat in it as well, not too much sugar. Easy horses may not have a good top line. So if you teach them to trot over poles, that will help, or even just walking or gating them over poles will help to bring up this top line.